In this video we're going to be looking at the latest release of Puppy Linux to be based on the Ubuntu binaries and that is the so-called Lucid Puppy 5.2.8. Now unlike other versions of Linux, Puppy is designed to run either from a CD or directly from a USB stick and that's the way we're running it today. So here we are on the main puppy screen, having just booted it. First thing we're presented with is a dialog box to get us to connect to the internet if we have an internet connection. I've got a wired connection on ETH0, so I just need to click on that. And puppy goes away and tries to connect to the internet. Now it's done it. So now we're nicely set up onto the internet. Very um, similar to the previous release of 5.2.5 in that we have a number of icons on the desktop here. And let's just take a quick tour around. We've got terminal window. We've got our text editor here, which is the text editor Gini. We have our control panel. And we get to various uh, ways of customizing and setting up our system. We have our installer. Now this nicely gives us a um, option to create other live CDs or USB sticks and it also gives us um, entry to the Puppy Package Manager for installing applications and we'll come to the installing of applications a little bit later in this video. Next we have the Puppy Mounter so we can actually mount or dismount disks at will. We have access to the help libraries and we have access to the file manager. It's a fairly simple affair, but it works well. We've got a number of files here. The thing to note is it's only a single click to navigate down into a directory. And then we have to use this icon to come back up. So as you can see here, we have a number of directories. As you click down, you can see what's in them. Again, right click will allow you to do various functions on here. If we've got a file like this, we can actually run it by just clicking on it there. You see a nice little video <laughs> that I did earlier. Apart from that, we can actually take these files out and we can drag them and place them onto desktop or we can right click them and uh, remove them. Here we have a shortcut to our word processor, which by default is, um, I think it's Abbey Word. Yes, it is, yeah. Next along, we have our spreadsheet, uh, which is GNumeric. So again, these are all open office compatible. We have our simple paint program. This is very much akin to something like Microsoft Paint. We have our drawing package, which is just a simple package, Inkscape Lite, to allow you to uh, draw diagrams and pictures. Next one gives you access to the browser. If I click that, you can see it boots me straight into Firefox because that's where I've configured it. I think the default is Dillo, but you can download and install Firefox very easily and we will come to installing an application in just a few moments. Next along is the email application, which I think is Subfeed. If you actually press this, you can actually configure your way into your server mailbox so that your client automatically downloads all your messages and indeed allows you to process your mail locally on your puppy machine and uh, respond to mail accordingly. Down from the email application is the access to your calendar. This is Osmo and it allows you to not only browse through the current calendar create tasks and input your various contacts as well as little post-it notes and things to jog your memory. Next we have access to the media player which is GNOME M player so that allows you to view video and audio files. Next we have the connection to the internet wizard okay, which we already looked at earlier and then we finally have access to what's known as QuickPet. So now, Quick Pet is one of two different methods that Puppy allows you to download applications with. Quick Pet is based around a small number of core applications and its main ethos is ease of use. So, normally when you're looking for an application, you'll come into Quick Pet and have a scan through the different tabs here to see if the application that you're after is available from Quick Pet and if it is, for instance, we can just click on the icon and install it. Um, if it's not in Quick Pet, there are a number of other options, so I'll come to that later. But let's just show you a simple install. Let's take Pigeon because that's fairly small as a download. I just need to click 
on the icon and you hopefully get informed if you need any other utilities in order to run Pigeon and so if you want to install those dependencies as well it allows you to do so I'm just going to take the default here and the first thing you'll notice is the terminal window opens up with a download progress bar as you can see there the uh, download is about to complete and yep here it goes and you're prompted whether you wish to install this package or just to leave it on the disk for you to install at your leisure later on. I'm OK to install that, so I am going to click on the OK button. Now, Puppy will churn away in the background actually doing the install, and uh, when it's completed that, we will get a number of messages pop up on the screen to confirm exactly what has happened and where you can actually find the new application. Ah, here we go. So you can see that the following package has been installed and it helpfully tells you where to find it in the main menu, which we'll come to in just a moment. It's under the Internet uh, category. So I click on OK and you can see that Puppy goes away and changes a few of the uh, system options so that it's easier for you to find the application. And finally, success message. So now if we go down to the main menu here, which is this big button here we can go to internet and hopefully we can see pigeon there we go we can just click on that and uh, here we are in the pigeon configuration so I'm not going to do that now I'm just going to click on close so that's quick pet the alternative uh, installer is something called the puppy package manager so if you click here up here on the more pets option you can actually get to the puppy package manager here and you can also get to some alternate packages such as open office java etc so i'll just quickly show you what the puppy package manager looks like okay so here we've got a lot more categories down here it's a little bit more text based you can just browse through it by category and you can just uh, scroll up and down and look for the application you want or if you know the title you can type in the name of the application that you want to download let's have a look for record my desktop and you can just click on that and uh, get it to install not going to do that now but uh, that's an alternative way of installing applications okay so the other icons on the desktop over here in the middle you can see this loan icon called save now I mentioned earlier that Puppy runs normally from a USB stick or a CD. Now, if you make any changes to the operating system, if you change the configuration or, for instance, as we've done now, download an application and install it, you can save it at any time by clicking on this icon here. And What it will do is it will write the entire contents of the operating system back to the USB drive so that next time you boot with that USB or CD, those changes will be immediately available. So that's a really useful feature. Over here on the right hand side, these final three icons allow us to lock the terminal for when we walk away from it and we don't want anyone else to access our data. Shortcut to the um, archiving zip file allows you to compress things uh, and access to the trash can. So when we delete stuff out of the file manager, it will automatically go into the trash manager and it will allow us to restore them very much like the uh, Windows equivalent. Oh, I should mention down here in the bottom left hand corner we have three icons here at the moment. Okay, one for our hard drive, which in our case is semi defective. So we are running off the USB drive, which happens to be this one in the middle. So our puppy is running off this SDB1, but we've also got a third drive here, which is a second USB drive which we've got some data files on. So if I click on that, you can see the file manager window opens up showing us the files. Now normally, let's just show you what happens when we add a new drive. So if I get rid of that drive and I unplug it from the system, let's just plug it back in to show you what happens. So Puppy takes a few seconds to register it. So you can see immediately the icon comes back here. But you can see there's no dot next to it. And that means that this drive is present but not mounted. So if I right click over it, I can run the Puppy Drive Mounter. And you can see here, this drive SDD1, I have an option here to mount it. So I can click on the mount. Here we go. We get our window back with all our data on that drive here and we've got this green dot next to it showing that it's mounted. 
Okay, so that's a nice graphical way of mounting and dismounting disks with Puppy. Um, so let's look at the Puppy toolbar at the bottom here. As we've kind of already mentioned earlier on, this big icon with the word menu in it is self-explanatory. It's the access to the main Puppy menu, so you can get to any of the Puppy functions from here. Often options on the menu will have sub-menus underneath them, so we've got desktop options, we've got our system options set up for configuring the operating system, utilities, file system, utilities, graphics, documents such as uh, word processor etc, our spreadsheet and business applications, um, access to our personal utilities, network, internet, multimedia and games. We also got access to our help library and our shutdown options. Okay, so we can just click back on the menu icon to hide that again. So if you can't find or you don't have an icon to get to any particular function, you can always get to it via the menu. To the right of the menu is this icon which allows you to select the default browser. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've configured Firefox as my default browser. I think Dillo is the uh, standard default. But if you've got a number of different browsers installed, you can switch between them using this simple application. To the right of that icon, we have the Iconify icon. Now, I have a uh, terminal window running here, so if I click on the Iconify icon once, you can see that it pulls up that window. And if I click on it again, it minimizes it. So it's a quick way of getting to the desktop. So if you've got a number of windows up that are for instance, obscuring some of these icons rather than trying to minimize them all. You can just use this icon to minimize them all and get to the desktop. Now, to the right are two buttons here, which are normally gray, but if you've got any windows open, you will get a simple representation of those windows here. And these two represent two virtual workspaces. Puppy calls them desktops. Okay, so we have for instance, desktop 1 and desktop 2. So this is a simple way of partitioning your applications into two different areas. For instance, you might want to put work and personal windows in different workstations so you don't get them mixed up. The middle area of the puppy toolbar here is for all your minimize applications. Again, click on the particular application to display it and again to minimize it back to the toolbar here. On the right hand side of the Puppy Toolbar is something akin to the Windows system tray. So first of all we have access to Pigeon, okay, which we just installed. So access to your chat application. Next we have our battery status, because we're running on a laptop. Uh, we can change the system volume to what we like. This next icon gives us information about our network connection. The icon to the right of the network allows you to see the free space on each of your drives. This next icon allows you to set up a firewall on your system, which might be useful if you're connected to the internet a lot. We have access to the Osmo calendar application. Again, it's exactly the same as clicking on the icon here on the desktop. And finally, we have the system time down in the bottom. If we click on that, we can change the way that the clock displays and the actual time, etc. And indeed, we can click here again into Osmo for adding tasks and times. So in a nutshell, that is Lucid Puppy 5.2.8. For anyone who doesn't require the glitz and glamour of the big distros and their GNOME and KDE desktops, then Puppy is a great choice. Thanks for watching.